started here. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Thomas King. I am a uh, MLOps uh, at uh, Nova Chemical here. Uh, and kind of, I'll just explain on our journey, uh, Nova Chemical's journey, kind of to implementing Unity. Uh, kind of nine months ago, my manager tasked me of it. I don't know why he tasked an MLOps person to do this, but uh, here we are. I kind of took on the challenge itself. Um, so kind of, there's not going to be a lot of fancy stuff I'm going to show you here today, but uh, the, kind of the goal is to kind of show where we struggled, where we fell, kind of what we have to do to get around all our issues, and kind of hopefully, if some of you guys are doing alongside the same journey, if you guys can take some of our learnings and uh, not make it as, as painful process as it was for us. So I'll kind of start with who are we, uh, Nova Chemical itself. We are, as the name suggests, a chemical company. Uh, we kind of approach chemicals as a sustainable and reliable source of plastics. Uh, which we're trying to make it, the world a better place, even though we are selling plastics. Um, but we try to be as low carbon emissions as possible. We're trying to do more advanced um, technologies to help improve our plastics and how we produce them. Uh, this is kind of where we started around two years ago. More, we started the whole digitization movement around data, being presenting our data more to our business people, to our engineers and our chemical plants and stuff like that for them to better utilize data. Um, so we've been working inside data, Databricks for about two years plus now, so we've got a lot of experience um, around it too. Uh, also too, just on a uh, NOVA, top 30 Canadian by value, like I say, we are trying to do a lot more recyclable company. We do have a vision for what we'll do in 23 and kind of our plan for that. Um, like I say, we do have a lot of employees worldwide and we do have a lot of plants kind of located all throughout North America. And each one of these plants definitely had its own data, have had its own um, visions and goals that we kind of want to help align with. And this is where our kind of movement started. Kind of, what do we want out of Unity? That was kind of the main thing that we looked at nine months ago here. Um, we wanted data governance and data catalyzation as a big pushing for us. Uh, mainly, not only because we control some PII data, but it was just around how do we present this data to our business owners in a secure way. A big thing for us too was access control. Of course, being a large company, we want to be able to control who sees what data. We don't want you know, finance data being leaked out, of course, and we don't want um, maybe some engineering data to be shared, because some engineers might have some issues with that. Um, a big thing for us, too, we are a full kind of Microsoft shop here. Um, and one kind of feature that we were told was Purview had a great integration with Unity Catalog, mainly with their lineage aspect of it. And we wanted to, with all the introduction of this new digitization, we wanted to give more ML capabilities. And ML was a really exciting terminology, as I'm sure it has been in other companies here in the last year, especially our engineers. Now, uh, where we first hit, where we started. So we had three Databricks workspaces, um, we didn't have any complex architecture. We had a dev stage prod, and we were using high metastore in each. This was kind of our legacy. Um, so we have a data lake, like I say, full Azure shop. We have data workspace, and we were fronting most of our data to Power BI. And that's where most of our business units, business units were consuming the data. Uh, I forgot to add in here too, but we have ADF basically being our orchestrator on the back end. Um, like I say, we started two years ago, and Databricks has come a long way with their workflows, and we just haven't caught up to that. So we started using ADF as our orchestrator. Um, some things to kind of know. Our cluster was running on like a custom mode. We had a service principle attached to it that was accessing the actual data lake. And also Power BI were connecting directly to that cluster to query the data. We weren't really using SQL warehouses at this time, as there's 
um, just some legacy infrastructure and processes being in place there. And access was all determined by the workspace and also the cluster because the cluster had all the permissions to the data. Now we thought when I first started nine months ago, we kind of worked with Databricks itself, created a unit catalog, um, created a meta store itself. We we're just like, okay, we just need to design our catalogs. And we wanted three, the stage prod catalog. We thought it would be easy migration, as most of our tables were actually external tables, and then we'd be done. Um, that was very, didn't work out as expected because we hit our first roadblock, which was clusters and cluster versions. Um, now, what we had was we had a, like I say, a custom mode version that was at 9.1. It was not Unity supported. So we had to first migrate to a Unity supported cluster. And for us, it was a shared cluster at version like 11.3. Now, one of the issues was uh, in that cluster itself, uh, being shared and only supported a certain amount of languages, this was back when shared clusters didn't support Scala. So we had, we actually did have some Scala implementations that we had to say, oh man, let's look at this and see what we can do with it. Um, another issue that we had, I don't know if you guys had experienced it on shared clusters, but there's an RDD security issue with Microsoft, uh, where when you're trying to load in a JSON object using RDD and you try to read that object, um, the shared cluster throws a Microsoft exception. And we went with Databricks back and forth, and they kind of said, it's a Microsoft issue. And that's all, that, that's all that we could do with that. Now, how we got around this was we were kind of stuck on this issue, refactoring code, um, refactoring all these notebooks, to the point that, well, the new shared cluster came out, which did support Scala, but we still had that RDD object. But um, Databricks came up with a new way of assign mode. Uh, where you could actually assign a cluster to a user or a service principal, which actually worked out great for us because what we did was we assigned the cluster itself to that ADF service principal. So it means that, hey, the only person or process that should be running on this cluster should be the ADF. And that supported all languages and we didn't have to do any code change. So it's kind of, in the sense of, it was a roadblock that kind of got taken away by time. Not, not by anything that we did, really, but kind of by Databricks coming out with a whole bunch of features and new stuff that helped and kind of us looking at that, communicating with our rep, and kind of getting those private preview features enabled. So this is definitely a big roadblock initially, just sense of make sure your cluster is Unity enabled before you try to do the migration. Our um, big second roadblock is Power BI. And I don't know if you guys know a lot of the under the hood of Power BI and how it connects to um, Databricks, but if you actually open an advanced editor, this is how it looks. So it has the actual Databricks URL, the HTTP path of the SQL endpoint, or and the um, source name, which is hide metastore. And that little tiny block of code caused a lot of grief mainly in the sense that it's hard coding high metastore. Um, and that's with all, all Power BI queries into Databricks. And this means that this needs to change and be updated for that because it, with Unity Catalog, you're not referencing high metastore anymore, you're referencing the catalog itself. So to do this, we need to parameterize as we're not having the same catalog na name for, for per environment as we have our three catalogs, dev stage prod. Um, so, we were talking around, we had to update around 100 reports um, manually, kind of, it was a, definitely a steering of a ship of saying, hey, we need to make sure that these reports are all parameterization before we can do this migration. Because like I said, we had that cluster mode and our legacy pattern was a lot of these Power BI have to connect into that cluster. And with it being an assign mode, it just doesn't work because it's a different user who's executing it instead of our API. And we kind of wanted to go down that design um, because instead of we wanting, instead of Power BI wanting to connect to our main interactive cluster, we wanted them to go through SQL warehouses. 
Um, so it was kind of an evolution of how the Power BI was connecting to DataWorks itself. Um, so, like I say, all the reports had to be parameterized. It was definitely a mammoth task of just track organization of different Power BI devs, making sure that they parameterize the projects or the reports, and then those reports didn't have any downtime when pushing and pushing this out. So, a big thing too with this was permissions. Uh, when we started enabling these Unity catalog onto these workspaces and then started putting clusters on a Unity supported, all of a sudden high Metastore permissions were kind of out the window um, that we needed to, because what happened was most of the people were connecting to our cluster and they had the service principle that had all access. Um, we had to change that back to a permission-based model on high Metastore. Um, so there's definitely a lot of learnings there. Just be careful around switching to a Unity cluster supported if you do not, because all of a sudden it does not take those um, legacy permissions. It now takes new permissions that you have to set on the high Metastore, as well as permissions on the new catalogs itself. So like I say, this led to a big kind of changing of how we're connecting and a big changing of how what we're connecting to and how many SQL warehouses were because we really need to consolidate the amount of connections that we're starting to get out because it was starting we were starting to um, support like 10 plus um, SQL warehouses when you don't really need to and we were building SQL warehouses for different project base and this this wasn't a sustainable model. So now actually doing the migration um, really wasn't the worst part. It was really just a lot of the setup for it. I just created a simple script that basically migrated the three types of tables we had, external, managed, and views itself. Um, we just ran scripts in each environment. And really, like I say, for us it wasn't too bad because most of our tables were external. Uh, and external tables are pretty easy to migrate in Unity Catalog. They do have issues though. One of the main issues that we had was duplicated tables. And what I mean by duplicated tables, I mean when two tables reference the same external location. Uh, that's just a no-go in Unity Catalog. And we had some of these issues and some of these tables that came up. And this is where we had to make that hard decision of which table made it really. And it was kind of uh, a little bit of a column of our um, table references, but and it was changing those table references in the Power BI reports if some of the Power BI reports pointed to it. So just be aware of how many duplicated tables you guys have. In our um, views, one of the biggest things was we migrated those views kind of in the same script that I did here. Um, one of the issues with that, and I would kind of suggest against it, was it messed up our lineage. Because if you now look at the lineage of our views in our catalog, it actually points to this script for where the notebook that created the view was instead of the source script. And to get around this, what we're doing is uh, we had a create view if not exists kind of format for how we're creating views in our notebooks. Uh, the issue with this is if it already exists, it doesn't create, it doesn't run that script again. So we're changing those to a create or replace views and this should fix the lineage, but it definitely wasn't a um, kind of a good show right away on that. And with managed tables, one of the issues that we kind of ran into was we needed to do this migration between Hive Metastore and the catalog, and we needed Power BI to have kind of a zero downtime functionality. Uh, so we needed some sort of ability to sync these two because in reality these were not the one, the hardest ones to actually sync because they were pointing to the same data. So we built a entire syncing process and kind of our goal is we're gonna let Power BI swap over naturally over a certain amount of time and then shut off that high meta store at the end of it. Now, one of the major things is it made us improve. This journey, the biggest thing that came out of it not only with implementing Unity Catalog, it, what it made us improve. Um, and I've touched a couple of these before, but one of the biggest things was our SQL warehouse design. 
we consolidated our design uh, from you know 15 plus uh, warehouses per environment to five warehouses per environment and we put strict kind of rules around in what scenario you go to which warehouse our permissions to data it's kind of definitely opened our eyes on especially when permissions got removed and who complained it kind of opened our eyes to who is accessing our data and should these people have the access that they're asking for and definitely like i say a clean up on duplicated external locations as it's really just kind of bad practice on that scenario because this is duplicated data at the end of the day it wasn't really the correct source of truth and a big thing for us was um, separation of sensitive data as we kind of what we've done is we've separated out our hr data or that finance data into a separate catalog so we can have a more fine-grained permission model on that and we can ensure kind of for audit and purposes that hey no one can access this data because of these permissions that you need capture is now enabled with us and like i say a big one was the cost of version improvements as we jumped from 9.1 and now we're at like the newest 13.3 uh, versions now where are we now kind of what what nine months ago to now what have we done uh, Union Catalog is enabled for all of our environments. We've done the complete migration. Um, we're still in the process of reports moving over. Most of the reports have, but like I say, there's a grace period that we're enabling different reports to. We have separate ca uh, catalogs for the classified data. Like I say, we've separated out that HR and put a really fine-grained, strict permission model on it. Uh, we do have purview scanning our Union Catalogs on a weekly basis to help get that meta, door, meta, um, <coughs> meta data available for data classification and a bit of a data governance too. And we're setting up a better role-based permission model to our data. Um, so it was definitely quite a long journey around that. Um, but we've improved along the way and our kind of our goal is to use all the great features that Unity Catalog has enabled, as I'm sure you guys have all heard from every single day breaks <laughs> meeting. And that's um, kind of it. Uh, if you have questions, I'm sure we'll have a questions period, but um, like I say, it was, I helped along with a lot of effort from the rest of my team in order to do this. Um, but I think the main goal was kind of, it wasn't as easy as I thought. Um, and there's definitely some struggles along the way, but there's a lot of benefits to it, not only for all the features, but all the learnings you'll have along the way. Zip.